anatomy and physiology tutorials, the heart and blood circulatory routes. In this tutorial, we will cover the basics of the human heart and our double circulatory routes, which include the systemic and the pulmonary. First, let's take a look at the human heart. Structurally, it is a muscular hollow organ made up of two receiving chambers, the right atrium and the left atrium, and two pumping chambers, the right ventricle and the left ventricle. Two major arteries through which blood passes exiting the heart are the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. You notice that the aorta is red in color and the pulmonary trunk is blue in color. This denotes that the aorta transports oxygenated blood and the pulmonary trunk transports deoxygenated blood. Branching off the pulmonary trunk are the right and left pulmonary arteries. The other blood vessels identified in this diagram are the right and left pulmonary veins, which transports oxygenated blood back to the heart from the lungs. Here is an inside view of the heart, revealing the right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. It is very important that blood always travels in one direction and does not backflow. Valves in the heart prevent backflow from taking place. The atrioventricular valves, or AV valves for short, prevent backflow from the ventricles back into the atria. The right atrioventricular valve, or the right AV valve, is nicknamed the tricuspid due to structurally it being made up of three flaps, or cups. The left atrioventricular valve, or left AV valve, is nicknamed the bicuspid due to structure, structurally being made up of two flaps, or cups. It can also be referred to by a third name, the mitral valve. The chordae tendinae are string-like structures that attach to the AV valve. They are pulled on by the papillary muscles when the ventricles contract, thus functioning to prevent back flow of blood into the atria. The semilunar valves prevent the backflow of blood in the great arteries, the pulmonary trunk and the aorta, back down into the ventricles. The pulmonary semilunar valve, or it can be referred to as just the pulmonary valve, blocks the backflow into the right ventricle. The aortic valve blocks the backflow into the left ventricle. Before beginning to go over our circulatory routes, we need to remember two points. The right side of the heart receives and pumps deoxygenated blood. Thus, on heart diagrams, the right side is blue. The left side of the heart receives and pumps oxygenated blood. Thus, the left side is red. The next point to make is that the atrial chambers always receive blood returning back to the heart via veins and the ventricles pump blood away from the heart via arteries. So let's try and answer these questions. The chamber that receives oxygenated blood is the, well, when breaking down the circulatory routes, sometimes you have to ask yourself two questions and you will be confident that you are on the right path. The first question to ask yourself, what type of blood? Well, that question said oxygenated. So that must be the left side. And what type of chamber? Oh, it said receiving. Well, that's an atrium. So the chamber that receives Oxygenated blood must be the left atrium. Let's try this question. The chamber that pumps deoxygenated blood is the, remember to ask yourself first, what type of blood? Deoxygenated. Well, that's the right side. And what type of chamber? Well, it said pumping. Oh, those are ventricles. So the chamber that pumps deoxygenated blood must be the right ventricle. 
Let's take a look at the double circulatory system in a human. It is made up of both a systemic pathway that transports blood from the heart to all body areas and then back to the heart. The pulmonary pathway transports blood to the lungs, then back to the heart. We will begin with the pulmonary circulatory route. The route begins at the right ventricle that has been filled with deoxygenated blood from the right atrium. The right ventricle pumps the deoxygenated blood into the pulmonary trunk, which then branches into the right and left pulmonary arteries. The pulmonary arteries branch into smaller arteries and then into arterioles which lead into the capillary beds within the lungs. Here oxygen will diffuse out of the lungs alveoli into the capillary and carbon dioxide will diffuse out of the capillary into the alveoli. The flow of the now oxygenated blood continues into venules which merge into larger veins. The right and left pulmonary veins make the return carrying the oxygenated blood and empty into the left atrium. The pulmonary circulatory route begins at the right ventricle and ends at the left atrium. Next, let's take a look at the systemic circulatory route. The systemic circulatory route begins at the left ventricle where oxygenated blood is pumped into the aorta. The aorta branches into smaller artery, arteries through which some oxygenated blood is transported to areas above the heart, into the arms, and the head, while other branches transport blood to areas below the heart, into the trunk, and the legs. Blood will make its way into the small arterioles and through a capillary bed, which is the site of exchange. Oxygen will diffuse out of the blood into the small, into the cells, and the carbon dioxide will diffuse out of the cells into the capillary. The flow of the now deoxygenated blood continues into venules, which merge into larger veins. These veins merge into the superior vena cava from above and into the inferior vena cava from below. The vena cava drain into the right atrium, concluding the systemic circulatory route. The systemic circulatory route begins at the left ventricle and ends at the right atrium. In order not to mix up the pulmonary arteries and veins, remember the saying about the color of blood vessels. Arteries are red, veins are blue, except with the lungs where the opposite is true. Pulmonary arteries transport deoxygenated blood away from the heart. So here, pulmonary arteries are blue. And the pulmonary veins transport oxygenated blood back to the heart. So here, pulmonary veins, they're red. Now that we've got the pathways down, we need to take a look at preventing backflow of blood during the cardiac cycle. During atrial systole, which is the part of the cycle when the atria are contracting and the ventricles are relaxing, ventricles fill with blood from the atria. The AV valves, the tricuspid and the bicuspid, are open to allow for the flow of blood from the atria into the ventricles. To prevent a backflow of blood from the pulmonary trunk and the aorta into the ventricles, the pulmonary and the aortic semilunar valves need to be closed. During ventricular systole, which is the part of the cardiac cycle when the ventricles are contracting, they are pumping blood into the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. The pulmonary and the aortic semilunar valves need to be open. The AVs close, blocking the backflow from the ventricles up into the atria. 
cardiac conduction system. The conduction pathway of electrical signals in the heart begins at the sinoatrial node, also known as the pacemaker, causing the atrial fibers to contract. The impulse then reaches the atrioventricular node, which is triggered to relay its own impulse by way of the bundle of his, which then branches into the Purkinje fibers, which radiate around the ventricles, initiating contraction. This explains the cardiac conduction route. Review of blood vessels. Arteries of the heart. Those transporting oxygenated blood are the aorta and the right and left coronary arteries supplying oxygenated blood to the heart itself. Those transporting deoxygenated blood to the lungs from the right ventricle are the pulmonary trunk that then branches in to the right and left pulmonary arteries. Arteries to identify around the body. The brachiocephalic, the brachial, where blood pressure is measured. The common iliac, common carotid, subclavian, renal, radial, ulnar, and femoral. Veins of the heart. Those transporting deoxygenated blood are the superior and inferior vena cavae draining into the right atrium and the right and left pulmonary veins transporting oxygenated blood from the lungs back to the left atrium. Veins to identify around the body. Brachiocephalic, superior vena cava, hepatic, Median cubital, this is the vein for drawing blood. Inferior vena cava, common iliac. Internal jugular, subclavian, brachial, renal, femoral, great saphenous. This concludes the tutorial on the heart and circulatory routes.